Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another pen video. Today I wanted to come on here and, and talk about what I'm going to be doing in September um, is I'm going to be participating in a challenge, uh, a, not a challenge that I thought up, but a challenge from Ink Journal. And if you all have been following my uh, videos, you know that Ink Journal, they're the ones that put out the uh, ink flight with the seven ink samples and the pen goodies every month. So they've created a challenge, and the challenge is to uh, to keep just one pen inked up every day, and it doesn't have to be the same pen. So, you know, in other words, you're, you're trying a different ink every day. So I think it's just so cool, and I'm having a little bit of a struggle emptying all my pens, but I haven't been inking up new pens other than the Twisby Go pens. So I may make it. Um, tomorrow I'll be cleaning out some pens and hoping that I don't have any left, but whether I do or I don't, I'm definitely going to try this because this is really awesome. Um, the pen that I'm going to concentrate on is my Serendipity pen, and I'll link you to the video I did you know talking about this pen this is a hybrid it's between it's like a fountain pen uh, and dip pen both it has a small reservoir and it has a, a number six nib so that's what makes it such a good candidate for this because um, when I dip this pen I can write for around uh, three pages of A5 and so I've got other nibs too. The one on there is a broad nib and then I've got a medium Goulet nib, a 1.1 Goulet nib and a 1.5. I don't have the full range yet but these are the ones I prefer anyway so far. I don't seem to get along really great with a fine nib but I do want to add that to my my um, collection after a while because I, I like the quality of these nibs and there is a, a reason sometimes to go that way. So I don't know if this is going to focus. So these are really nice nibs and they go on this pen super easy. All I have to do is uh, use my little uh, uh, lobster band to, to pull up the, the nib and, and uh, feed you in it off and rinse it off. So um, so that's what I wanted to talk about but I wanted to show you the inks. I have gone to a uh, little bit of a uh, work here to go ahead and I went through all my massive collection of ink samples and I chose 30 because I knew I I knew that if I waited and I didn't do that ahead of time that I would be like you know this decision making doesn't always come easy because when there's so so many so yeah it took me like two or three days to work that out because I kept changing my mind but now I'm kind of determined to stick with these 30 and uh, these were already when that when an ink sample comes into my house I immediately get it um, swatched onto one of these and so let's go through them because I thought you might be interested in what the ones that I chose just because we're all ink pen and ink people so we'll go through them real quick and then I'll show you something else here um, so these come from all different <laughs> places and, and people um, this came from a pen friend that sent me a sample Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet and I you know some of these I just haven't given full uh, time with yet and this is so great about this project I think the next one is Mont Blanc Lucky Orange okay and then Monteverde Olivine some of these this is a pen friend sent to me to a sample some of these it's been that I got them because people here recommended the color and some have just been me you know poking around picking colors and then if it says IF with a date that is an ink flight one so this is Colorverse Lights on Series, and it's an ink flight one. And then um, I tried to figure this one out. I, could, I think I ordered this because it's Robert Oster Lime Green, or Green Lime. Sorry, ignore that. <laughs> I saw on the bottle that I had it wrong. Okay, then the next one is J. Arvon. Um, oh, I can never pronounce that, but you can see it. <laughs> De Lune there. And I've worked with this a little bit, but I only used it in one pen with one... I think it was a medium nib, so I'm going to purposely put that in a, a broad or a uh, even better a stub to see how it does. But I really haven't given it a full rant, you know use yet in its sample. And then Robert Oster Cafe Crema, that's the next one. I did I numbered these on the back too, and I'll show you in a minute why. It's kind of a, 
a project. I've, I've excited about how I've done it. And then this is another one, a pen friend sent, KWZ Chiefs Red. I thought that was really pretty. And I want to know before Christmas how that, um, you know, performs and everything. Um, Bunga Box Hat Sukhoi. I've used this in an extra fine only, so I can't wait to see this in a broad or um, a stub nib. And another pen friend sent me a sample of this. Um, this is an ink flight one. Let's see if we can get that shimmer to show. Sometimes it's really hard, but anyway, that's <laughs> Diatromenus pearlescent whisker whiskey copper. I didn't know if I had enough left. You have to have somewhere between one mil and two to get this feed saturated. You know, I've had very very little and had a good, you know, pretty good results just kind of rolling it in the ink sample. <laughs> um, so that's that one. And then Kobe number six Bordeaux. Another one that I really want to see, you know, work with longer. So I'll have, you know, a whole day with it at least. Um, KWZ Standard Honey. Okay, and that's the next one. Um, they're all over the place with color, I think. And Diamine Majestic Blue. Trying to think now see some of these it fools me I can't can't remember till I see the ink sample vial who it came from and then I know because I see the writing uh, diamine classic red okay I keep wondering why I put this in here but I, I almost took it out several times and I just couldn't bring myself to Lamy violet now that was cartridges that I harvested into a um, a little uh, sample vial um, Diamine Arctic Blue, which is a shimmer, and that's an ink flight. I can tell by that that that's an ink flight. And real shimmery. That should be real pretty. Uh, Pen Friend sent me this one, Noodler's Antitum. Okay, I'm not sure how that's spoken, but you see, uh, it, it gets like this. We have so many that we want to enjoy, and, it, and it's, uh, you know, this is going to be 30 of them that I'll get to really pay attention to. Pop, Papier Plume, Bootlegger Sacrament. That was out of an ink flight and one that I wanted to spend more time with. Pen Friend sent this one, Roarer and Clinger Vertigris. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on any of my pronunciation because, wow, I can't do it. Okay, next. Aurora Blue out of ink flight in June. So that's cool. And then um, another ink flight one from April. Colorverse Gravity Wave. That's another one I really like. Let's see. We get, we got a combination of light today. It's pretty good though. Okay, Caveco Ruby Red. Um, this okay. I've only used in a medium, and it's I've jotted down Tri Bold or 1.1. So I'm really wanting to see how that ink. I'm considering a purchase of a small bottle of this um, because all I've had is cartridges so far. But I I write. I continually enjoy writing with my Tombow object with this ink. Okay, and here's another ink flight one. Diatromenus Document Fog Gray. I thought this was really nice. And heaven, again, just, you know, we get not overwhelmed, but in some days I'd call it that, but just there's so many good ones to choose from. Robert Oster Fire and Ice. That's the next one. Um, okay, here's another one that a, a, another pen friend sent. A Diamine Blue Pearl. And it does have some Real shimmer. I think you could see that a little bit. Okay, and here's another ink flight one. July of this year, Kirshner Black Rose. I've written with it just a little, but I really want that preserved in my notebook. Um, so, and that's one that I want to try some more. And then this one, I believe I ordered. <laughs> Noodler's Fifty uh, Fourth Mass um, had heard a lot of good things, and I I kind of like that. I can see why people like it. Okay, then the next one. Okay, these next three were new to me that I, when I purchased those shark pens I showed you, I got these little samples at Goulet. So, J. Arbon Rue Granat. <laughs> There's my attempt. It's kind of a deep, deep red. I like that a lot. And then this one is, another, like I said, another one that new to me from Goulet. Roaring Klinger Sulferni, Sulferno. <laughs> um... I did discover that that kind of crosses paths with some inks that I already have, but that's why we get the samples. Don't ever order bottles without, you know, really looking at it, because it, uh, don't ask me why I know that. <laughs> okay, so then the last one, new to me from Goulet Pens, is a Monteverde Man Mandarin Orange. 
So that's my lineup. That's my 30. Now, let me show you what I did to try to organize it. And, you know, it's not the prettiest, but it, this, um, I put them all in here. And so we're starting with number one. So Noodler's Blue Bonnet is in this number one position. And I just know in my head that it's one through 30. These three are here because I got two mil samples of each of these last three so I could really work with the ink and I just have been lazy I need to go ahead and dump those together and make it just one vial that's how I'd like to keep them so I've tried to set myself up for success because you know these challenges they're wicked fun but um, I haven't always had success with these kinds of things but I thought if I choose the inks and I get them organized and I have my pens and nibs you know my pen is always ready but since uh, I like the idea of um, making it more interesting by changing the nibs. Since at this point, anyway, I, I do plan to stick with that pen. Um, I th it's so easy to clean out and, and I won't get too carried away or backed up on, you know, um, not getting things printed. <laughs> My husband will get that. Um, anyway, th this is what I've chosen, but I also reserve the right. I'm going to go ahead and, and make sure I remind myself that I could change what what I've decided to do at any point. If I decide, well, okay, I'm tired of using that pen or maybe I'm wearing it out or something, then I can start doing it differently. And I don't need to go in order. I just wanted to know which, you know, ones I was doing so that I could have a system. But if, you know, if I go in order, then that just means I don't have to make a decision that day. I can just, you know, one, two, three... But so I know myself, so that's what I'm doing. But if you want to follow along with this challenge that Ink Journal has is uh, sponsoring, it says on the information from this uh, month's Ink Flight that they're going to have it on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and that's their name and handle. And this is the hashtag they're using. So I just think it's really cool. I, I, I'm excited. I really am about this because this means that these samples that have sat kind of um, you know, unused, well, not not completely, because like I mentioned, I've used a lot of them already in a small amount or with a medium or fine point. You know, I've just worked with them just a little bit. So um, I think that's everything I wanted to say. I plan to participate, and I'm really hoping that I can get everything else cleaned out tomorrow and uh, definitely not inking up other pens unless I just have to make a review, and that's different. That's like, almost like you know, outside of this, but, so, that's, that's what I wanted to show you, really, so that, in case it inspires you to get out some of your ink samples, or to follow along with this, because part of the fun is going to be seeing other people's, what they chose, you know, so, let me just grab what I was going to do, is, um, I, I believe, and like I said, I, over the weekend, I'll probably think about this, uh, Saturday it begins, so I've got to get my act together, uh, this is Robert Oster Tranquility. I meant to say that. Uh, and what I was going to do is sort of a sample page here of what I'll do for each one of these. And I'm going to save, <laughs> save a page because I'm going to go ahead and make little boxes. And each day that I, um, um, you know, ink up the pen and, and work with that ink color, I'm going to have one page that gets preserved kind of like this. But what this page, you most of you have seen, is, um, or those that watch regularly my, sh um, yeah, my show, <laughs> my, my uh, um, channel, this is all of what I have in bottle form, which I now have 23, and I, ca I can't get any more. I've only got two more spots in my um, shell case there for, for full bottles, so I'm telling myself that, and that's my story. So, <laughs> help me stick to it. Um, and let's see. Let's look at that one that I was saying. Yeah, here it is. So this is what what this is the benefit and the joy of having this kind of a chart is that I can kind of say, oh, okay, we're getting mighty close here to now. This will look different on this paper. So when I get this one onto the Rhodia Gold Book, it may look even closer to one of these. But certainly it looks a lot like the Sitz Cruz Knock Dark Orchid. So um you know, right away, shiny object. I saw this as new. I always click on the new <laughs> at Goulet pens, and there it was, you know. And But then I thought, well, let's just see how that kind of goes, because it, 
it's reminiscent and I certainly have that magenta color kind of covered so but I'm gonna enjoy the sample anyway so when I get done doing that um, 30 which my boxes are gonna have to be kind of small over here let's see whoops <laughs> I didn't mean to give you a complete um, then I'll be having that uh, that spread which you just have to use your imagination and so do I at this point I've got only one day though to prepare it to make myself sure that I'm gonna do that part and then each day I'll come in and uh, you know do my testing so let me see if I can find a page where I actually did that I'm pretty sure there is one Oh, bear with me here sorry I should have tabbed this ahead of time okay so it'll look something like this so with each of these 30 inks I'm gonna have a lasting record of you know what I thought of it and um, a little ink writing sample and and that's where I can pull the nib off. I can even just pull just the nib and uh, try it with a, a broad too. So it might get a little messy, but that's okay. If I say, well, gee, I don't know. I'd like to see that in just a medium instead of the broad. It's going to be really easy with that pen. So when I get all done, I'll have this record and, you know, which is now just only in the imagination. But I think it's going to be really cool. So I thought, um... Yeah, let's, you know, yeah, I buried that one so we could put that here now. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to share it with you what I was going to do because, uh, you know, that's how I get inspired is seeing all the wonderful things that other people, you know, talk about doing and put out there. So, we have a crystal. <laughs> oh boy, I'm excited about this one. This one's a little bit unusual. So, this little crystal here, I'll tell you the history of and hopefully we can get there. Okay. This is an Andara crystal from California, and I, you know, it's not in the crystal books, so I had to do some research, and I also had to go a little by memory to make sure I was getting the right information, because this was given to me at a crystal class at my friend's house that, gosh, there must have been 13 or 14 of us, and other people seemed to already know about these crystals, and my friend even had beautiful larger pieces that were made into jewelry but these are known as healing stones and very powerful crystals and they look like glass you know I hadn't heard of it and they did caution us that if you were going to purchase some you know that you need to be very careful it does look kind of better on the hand there um, be very careful that you're getting an authentic one and that's something I'd have to actually contact my friend Karen to find out um, what she would recommend or if she knows of us you know where to order them because I don't remember from the class but I wanted to show you and this is um, this is some information I got at amirabeth.com which may be a, a reliable source of buying them from I'm just not sure yet and I haven't spoken uh, you know had a chance to ask my friend but but I know that this is right in terms of where they come from um, because I remember enough about what they said. Uh, it says the first Andara was discovered in February 1967 on the Northern California property of a Choctaw medicine woman by the name of uh, Lady Nellie. Over the years, more and more Andaras were discovered on her property, and Lady Nellie felt guided to begin to share them with the world. Also found on the land is a powdery white substance called Ithurum, and I'm not sure if that's pronounced right, or pre Prima Matra, First Matter. It is the substance that distinguishes a true Andara from obsidian imitations. Andaras and slash Ithurum, <laughs> probably can't say it the same twice, is a monatomic energy, meaning one atom. The spin rate or frequency of these atoms is very high and used throughout history to raise our vibratory state and expand consciousness. If an Andara does not come from the land in North California, stewarded by uh, Lady Nellie, or land void of Ithrium, it is not a true Andara. Now, I'm not sure a hundred percent about the accuracy of every word in this information but I do remember that it was you know the story about where it was found is is definitely what we were told at our training too and um but I've read that that they have these in a part of Africa so I, I don't know this could be 
quite old and so I don't want to make it like it's the final word or anything but it's it's been a very special crystal to me for one thing it was given to each one of us a little tiny piece like this was given to each one of us during that class and I'll never forget taking that crystal class it was so amazing to see uh, my friend's uh, 20 plus year collection and to really get to see and hold uh, so many of her crystals so I just thought I'd show it to you um, they they mentioned a lot about healing that it was just an, a miraculous healer and who who doesn't need something like that from time to time so I've been known to put it in my sock to help my foot and you know all kinds of you know things so I was trying to see if there's more there's just a lot here but you can go to this website if you're interested amirabeth.com so I just wanted to say uh, before I end the video that um, let me know what you think this is a neat idea isn't it I'm not my idea I want to emphasize that I'm not I'm not running this challenge I'm I'm gonna be lucky to uh, you know make it through <laughs> get my pens emptied and and uh, but I'm gonna have fun with it and I'm sh I thought that uh, just like when I shared about uh, ne uh, Inco Rimal, uh, a lot of people hadn't heard of it. And so this is just something that we might all really enjoy following, even if just to see um, what other people inks they're using and stuff and get inspired. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, we're about a week away from the one year anniversary of me doing these YouTube videos. So stick with me because I'm going to do a video, you know, kind of updating uh what's going on what's where am i at now compared to a year ago so anyway thank you for being here and i will see you next time bye for now